So one day I was sitting at my desk working when my wife came in and she said, why don't you print something out for my brother Austin? And I was like, hmm, okay. So I went to Thingiverse and I found this pretty cool skull and I printed it out. After I printed it out, I was like, wow, awesome. This is so great. I can make it move and talk and even maybe clean the room. Oh wait, I'm not that smart, but I can make it light up. Here's my build video. Warning, the following video segment is produced by a manufacturing engineer attempting to use Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to construct the best LED circuit. Do not use his method of using said laws on a test because you will fail or at best make a C like he did. I've been putting together a circuit for my, uh, my little lamp that I'm gonna give to Austin and I've been playing with some LEDs. I wanted to put together a little circuit diagram so that I kinda knew what I was doing. So the voltage supply that I'm using is a 5.1 volt and 850 milliamps. And the first circuit I put together runs something like this where I have one resistor supplying my two red LEDs. And the red LEDs consume two volts and um, 20 milliamps, so 0 0.02 amps. And then the circuit is completed by going down to ground. And then I have my green LEDs over here, and I put two resistors in parallel. This way the resistance is less, so the green LEDs will burn brighter, and they run down to three LED, three green LEDs. Each LED here consumes 3 volts, also 20 milliamps, so 0 0.02 amps, and it's completed by going to ground. So I wanted to know what my resistance should be to run the circuit and not burn out the LEDs, because I've actually burned out a couple of LEDs. However, I only have 200 million ohms resistors, huge resistor amount, so I really have 200 million ohms. So I decided to go ahead and do the math anyways. Um, these are in parallel, and since these are the same, pretty much just divided by half, so 100 milliohms go here. All right. And we have 5.1 volts, which means we have 5.1 volts at this point and 5.1 volts at this point. So let's go ahead and do this portion of my calculation, that, that circuit. So I have 2 volts in parallel, which equals 2 volts. We'll redraw this over here. So I have 2 volts. I have 0.2 amps, 0.2 amps in parallel, which you just add those together, um, which equal 0.04 amps. And then I have my resistor at 200 milli. Ohms. But we won't really want to look to see what is the minimal resistance. So we'll go ahead and cross that out, put a little question mark here, and finish off our problem, 5.1 volts. So we know that um, V equals IR. And we have 2 volts across our LED, so 2 volts minus 5.1 volts equals 3.1 volts. So we'll have 3.1 volts going across our resistor, and 2 volts are consumed at our LEDs. So now we can figure out what's the minimal resistance. So we'll go ahead and plug it into our VR. So 3.1 equals what? We have a total amps of 0 0.04 times our resistance ohm. And we'll just divide 3.1 by 0 0.04 and we get 77.5 ohms. So this 200 uh, million ohms is a huge overkill, just ginormous overkill. But let's go ahead and do this other circuit where it leaves our power supply and goes down to our three green LEDs, these three green LEDs. So we have a total voltage here of three volts being consumed by the LEDs and a total amps is gonna be 0 0.06 amps. And we have 5.1 volts coming in and we want to know our resistance. So this is really easy. How many volts do we have going across the resistor? Uh, should be 2.1 volts now. 2.1 volts going across the resistor. And we do the same steps down here. So 2.1 divided by 0 0.04 equals, our total ohms in this case, equals 52.5 ohms. So this 100 million ohms is way overkill here. So let's go ahead and change the circuit around to make things a little bit better. Let's have our power supply, 5.1 volts, go across our resistor. Don't know how many we'll put there, but we'll say resistance one, one. And then that goes down to our red LEDs, our two red LEDs, and then comes over to our three green LEDs and goes down to ground. Okay, so what do we know? We have two volts here, two volts here, three volts here, three volts here, three volts here, and then 0 0.02 amps. So here comes our issue, right? We'll have two volts at this point, and we'll have three volts at this point, and our current is going to be 0 0.06 and 0 0.04. So I have a total of 5 volts, which leaves 0 0.1 volt going across the resistor. Now this is scary. We might not be able to do this just because our power supply isn't high enough. But we'll try it anyways, and we'll try to make do a calculation.
position of our resistance real quick. So I have 0 0.0, no, 0 0.1 amps going across everything here. And one volt across the resistor, so I'll just do this number. Uh, 0 0.1 divided by 0.1 equals R. A resistance of one. That's a very low, low resistance. But if we make it higher, what happens? Our voltage increases, doesn't it? Which means these lights shouldn't work. Okay, so this might be setting up for a failure here. Uh, let me go ahead and build a circuit, and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I set up my circuit here. Well, here goes the test. I don't know if this is going to work. And it doesn't work. Um, so the reason for that is it looks like we are drawing too much voltage from our LED. So I believe if I remove one, it might work. No, no, because I have two volts here and three volts here. So regardless how many LEDs I remove on the green side, I won't get them to light up. But if I remove the red LEDs, the green ones should light up. Let's see if that works. So, there. All right, so now I'm consuming three volts with one resistor. So there's our, there's our problem. Um, it's the fact that we're consuming too many voltage on this, too much voltage on this side of our circuit. And of course, voltage goes through the path of least resistance. So if I were to put the red one back in, right there, yeah, it goes through the two volts because it's the path of least resistance. And the three volts, there's not enough power to power the three volts. So how can we make this to where we get all five of our LEDs lit up in this fashion with one resistor? Because ideally, we want to be able to limit our resistor. So there is a good question. Our power is flowing in through the resistor, coming up this side, that's the short lead and going through the green and then coming to the black. So let's come out the side of the black and go into our red. Ah, short, I gotta reverse, maybe. I don't know if this is gonna work at all. Well, looky there, it did work. So in theory, I should be able to add a another here. Okay, so now they're all on. We changed, changed it so that we have our power supply, 5.1 volts, running to through our resistor, goes to our three L green LEDs, then it's going down to our two red LEDs and goes down to ground. So why is this one working and not this one when they're set up in parallel? This is set up in, in series. So that's a pretty good question to me. Don't know why, guys. So if you know why, let me know. But the next part of the series was to remove this resistor because I don't need to limit my five volts because I have five volts being consumed here. So here we go. I might blow up all my LEDs. I might not. Either way, it's gonna be exciting for me. So we'll plug this bad boy right in here. Oh, and it's brighter and they're running. So I have an extra green one. So we're gonna add one more green to this, this circuit. We're gonna add it down here. Why? Because I wanna see if, in theory, my suggestion is that it's not gonna work because we're gonna over consume our voltage supply. That's the idea. So this is just fun. All right, long one's positive, short one's negative. So I am coming in on here. So that means I need to go just like this. And nothing's working. So maybe I got it backwards. Then, and nothing's working again. So I guess I was right, right? Yeah. But I can add as many green LEDs as I want, saying that my long one is on the positive side, and yeah, I can add more green LEDs. This is exciting. So we know that adding an extra one down here didn't work. Um, we're using 0.1, so 0 0.0, 0 0.1. Amps. And my power supply, it can supply 850 milliamps, right? 850 milliamps is 0.85 amps. So we're consuming 0.1 amp, or or 100 milliamps, and we're, we, we have the ability, because um, amps aren't forced through, they're kind of just waiting around, so we have the ability to supply 8 amps. So we're not going to overpower my, my little USB power supply. Um, however, the voltage might harm. But I think it'll work. I think it's good enough to go ahead and put it together and uh, send it to Austin. If things burn out, they burn out. In order to model the base of the skull lamp, I took a picture of the bottom of the skull with the contact points marked in black. Before dropping the picture in my CAD program, I cropped the picture to reflect the measuring points I took on the skull. This made it easier to scale the picture in my CAD program. Once the picture was scaled properly and constrained it out to the XY origin, I could properly place the holes for the LEDs. Now the diameter of the LEDs are 182 thousandths, but my printer requires a 25 thousand offset to ensure the printed holes have a diameter of 182 thousandths. I also added a 10 thousand fit tolerance for safe measure. 
Once the base was modeled, I went ahead and built the sides around to form the box. After the sides were constructed, I added material for screw holes so that I could screw the bottom of the box closed. Typically, you can get away with using an 8 inch diameter hole for screws to screw into. After constraining out all the holes, I added material around the screw holes just for structural support. I then extruded the material up, leaving an 8 inch gap so that the box lid would set flush with the bottom. After that, I created a hole in the back side of the box for the power wire. I had to add the offset of my printer to the diameter of this hole to ensure that the wire would fit. Then it was time to create the bottom lid. I used the same geometry as the top side of the box. However, I had to offset it with my printing offset. This way, the lid would fit inside the box. After that was done, I decided to put happy birthday on the front side of the box. From my last video, I learned that having the letters extruded an eighth of an inch is too great and the letters don't print out very well. So I half that dimension and I only came in a sixteenth and it printed out a lot better. After printing out the skull, the skull had a lot of PLA spider webs inside of it and they were pretty difficult to remove. I used a couple methods. I first started out using a blow dryer and that didn't work out very well. Uh, I then resorted to using a lighter and the lighter actually worked out fantastic. It melted away all the small little PLA spider webs inside the skull. I was actually shocked how well it worked. I also learned that using 20 gauge solid core wire is not the best wire to use because when it came time to run the wires through the skull into my base, I actually broke off the leads of the LED and had to restart. Also, when it comes to soldering, having a helping hand is a great help. Right here you see me using my little robot clock to help hold the wires together so that I can solder them and get a good bond. It worked out fantastic. I then used my soldering iron to melt a hole in the eye of the skull for my LEDs to fit. This worked out great. I also had to use a little bit of super glue to hold the LEDs in place and after about 30 seconds of drying, everything held in pretty tight and worked great. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. If you want to see more, click on the video up here. If you have an idea or suggestion, click on this video and leave it in the comment section. And if you like what you see, subscribe. Well, thanks again.